Welcome to another edition of U.S. Farm Reports, brought to you today and each weekday at this time by members of the National Farmers Organization in this television viewing area. The National Farmers Organization is an organization dedicated to raising and stabilizing farm prices through collective bargaining. Today's U.S. Farm Report is entitled Farm Wives' View of Farming. Leading today's U.S. Farm Report discussion is Ivan Straczynski from Oxford, Iowa. This is certainly a pleasure for me to have the opportunity to visit with some leading ladies from Eastern Iowa who are farm wives, and they are very good leaders in the field of agriculture. It is my pleasure at this time to introduce to you on U.S. Farm Report Mrs. Jack Driscoll of Williamsburg, Iowa, and to her right, Mrs. Fern Crawford from Lone Tree, and Mrs. Delmer Burstler from Ladora. We will be visiting with these ladies this afternoon, or today, to talk about what parts that women can play in the National Farmers Organization as well in the general field of farming. We do know that the American housewives, as these ladies are, are also great consumers of their own farm commodities. Now, I'd like to have these ladies tell us a little bit about their farming operations, where they're from, and go into just a little explanation of what type of farming they do in their areas. And we'll start this off with this is Jack Driscoll. Will you tell us a little about your farming operations, please? Yes, I'll be happy to. I'm a homemaker. We own and operate 650 acres in the heart of Iowa County near Williamsburg. We have registered Angus cattle and Hampshire hogs, general grain and livestock operation. We attend the Catholic Church in Williamsburg, and we have two boys, so we hope to carry on our farming operation. All right, thank you. Would you... Uh I'd like to tell us a little bit about your farming operations in the Lone Tree area, Mrs. Crawford. Uh, we own and operate a farm in southeastern Johnson County near Lone Tree and have two sons. We raise corn, oats, and beans and have stock cows that we feed out the calves, uh, also uh, sows that we feed out the pigs, and we have horses and ponies. I see you have quite a farming operation there. It keeps you very busy. And uh, Mrs. Bursler, would you tell us about your farm operations, please? Uh, we live in, we own and operate a farm in the southwestern part of Iowa County. We have five boys and two daughters. We attend the Methodist Church in Mellersburg, Iowa. We raise corn and soybeans. We have cattle, we feed out the calves, and we raise hogs. Well, this gives you a general cross-section of Eastern Iowa's leading farm ladies. And as you see, they are all producers of the most important commodity that the American people can use, and that's food. We're here in the bread basket of the Midwest, but certainly we center on a farm problem. This is what we're going to be talking about today that we do have a farm problem, and our particular farm problem at this time is the lack of equity of income, but the latest government statistics telling us that the farm producers are earning 53% of the income of our non-farm uh, friends that work in other industries and also clerical workers and so on. So this is the general problem that we're going to be talking about today. The National Farmers Organization is certainly gaining experience in the fields of marketing, of selling our products, and we have done this through marketing arrangements for livestock. We're doing this also for grain through in-position sales, as well as the marketing agency in common for dairy. We're trying to increase the income of the American farmer, and of course, the ladies figure in this very heavily because if the American farmer, I know personally, I have the income that there are a lot of house furnishings and just little things that these electrical gadgets that these ladies like they pick up. They always, always go for a new linoleum in the kitchen, things of this type, certainly that these ladies would be interested in. So 
We'll start our discussion with Mrs. Jack Driscoll, and I'm going to ask her why, just why did you join the NFO? Well, um, at our farm, I feel the production is only half of the operation. The marketing makes up the other half. And I feel that we have been very lax and unrestricted in the dealings with the marketing officials. The, the tremendous price spread between the farmer received from, for his products and the price that, um, that everybody lives off of us after it leaves our gate. And I feel that uh, the farmer is the one that should do something about this, and this is why we joined the NFO. Well, you certainly have a lot of reasons there. I, I wouldn't disagree with any of them. And we'll move on with the same question to Mrs. Fern Crawford. Uh, why did you join the NFO? We felt a need for some sort of a marketing plan to help us with this end of our operation. The farmers have produced an abundance of products but have not received his fair share in the monetary return. All right, thank you, Fern. And, uh, well, uh, Miss Clay, could you join the NFO? Well, I'm, we're proud of our profession as farmers. We, um, with a family of five boys, if we were going to keep them interested in farming, we find it necessary that we must have an adequate income comparable to the non-farmer if we are going to keep the boys interested in the farm. All right, thank you, Luella. Moving on then with the question to, again, Kathleen, uh, would you tell us how has the NFO benefited you up to this point, do you feel? Well, I feel that um, we have raised the price of hogs considerably, and it has um, uh, made many, many friends in our organization. And one thing I'd like to stress is the wives should go along to the meetings and keep up on what is going on. And um, um, helping me, I feel that it has helped my husband, and I can help him by taking care of all the marketing arrangements, which requires a good many hours in the morning because you have to line up trucks and you have to, if lots of people doesn't have a full load, and it takes many hours of um, contacting him back out in the field and me at the telephone, and, and I feel that uh, we've done a great deal towards the marketing arrangements. We certainly appreciate the ladies taking over from part of our work, actually. Uh, this is a farming operation, and uh, we always have the, our wives assist us, as they are the other half of the farming operation, and they work well into working in the National Farmers Organization, as Kathleen has pointed out here. And we certainly we as farmers are busy producing, that there are times during the busy season, such as the planting season, which you just completed, that we certainly appreciate any help that you can give us as you've told us that you've done here today. And moving to Fern, uh, how do you feel that the NFO has benefited you? Well, as Kathleen has said, uh, we do uh, appreciate a little increase in the price for what we receive. Uh, it helps get a few of the things that we feel we need to make things a little happier for ourselves and comfortable for our family. It's broadened our scope. We've met people from other parts of the country. Uh, just this winter at the National Convention in St. Louis, we talked to dairymen from Wisconsin. We understand their, uh, their problems better than, than just reading it in the paper. When you talk to them in person, you feel more closer contact with them. Uh, marketing, of course, uh, in the marketing arrangements, Kathleen's busy loading up, uh, getting the loads straightened out. I'm usually busy hauling the loads into the deathering point for our own personal uh, operation. Uh, I think that probably is... Uh, I might, uh, thank you Fern, I might add at this point that Fern also works as our first district of Iowa NFO secretary which released the man for other work and we certainly appreciate the fine job that she's doing in this particular area. Uh, let's uh, visit with Luella for a while here. Uh, just how do you feel that the National Farmers Organization has benefited you. Well, I think that the NFO program has been a very educational program to me. It's made me realize that it isn't only the farmers in our community that, that uh, have problems, but basically the farmers all over the Midwest or all farmers in the United States have the same problem. And that is 
Uh, they are doing a great job of producing their commodities, but when they open the gates and sell them, they have little profit left, and their problems is all the same. And it's been a v very educational program for me, both in economics and history. These, of course, are the secondary and also additional benefits that we uh, have by joining the National Farmers Organization. And also here we're hoping to explain to you that the National Farmers Organization has been instrumental in bringing about the greater competition amongst the present-day buyers for our livestock commodities as well as grain uh, by facilitating the, uh, I should say, concentrate, concentrating the production into a particular area of a particular quality. This is cut down on, of course, a lot of cases that of marketing costs are reduced and in many instances this has been passed on to the NFO members themselves. Now moving back into the women's viewpoint which we've talked about earlier in the program, these are farm wives, outstanding leaders in each respective areas, doing a lot of work towards the getting an equity of income and as you heard them say that the reasons that they have done this is for various and I'm sure that you'll agree with them. We're going to ask Mrs. Crawford at this point how she goes about purchasing groceries. We talk about the changing of times. We know that through the years that things have changed and the same is holding true in the food industry. As you recall, maybe possibly 10, 15 years ago, the methods of what we used as consumers purchasing our food items have changed considerably. We moved from the independent one man unit to the super chain stores as we know them now. So would you care to tell us uh, a little bit about the changes in this respect, Mrs. Coffin? Well, shopping is no longer just a matter of going to the corner grocery store and buying food as it used to be. We pick up hairdressing, magazines, uh, socks, drugs, hardware, dishes, and an endless a list of things. And then when we come to the cashier's counter, uh, these are all lumped into our mind as food items. And we say, my, isn't food expensive these days? When really, it is largely a non-food uh, items that we have purchased. This is very true. We, we've heard this uh, many times, and I'm sure you have. And of course, the National Farmers Organization is always interested in bringing forth the facts uh, that uh, actually the people do, whatever they put into this little brown uh, sack they call groceries, there are a lot of things that aren't food items. And this, of course, we like to point out because there are a lot of hard items also included in the grocery bill. Uh, I'd like to have Kathleen go into a little detail of how she feels that the farmers can and are raising their income through the program of collective bargaining designed by the National Farmers Organization. Well, this always amazes me because we think of um, a large number. Well, uh, we all know that the uh, farmer is only 6 to 7 percent of the population. And actually, we have 100 percent control of the food produced in America through collective bargaining. We can gain control of our own destiny. We don't have to figure the numbers by the members. We figure the members by their production. And this is one thing our national president brought out in um, his speech the other evening. And um, this is one thing that um, I'm real proud of, that um, all the uh, major farm organizations have endorsed the uh, bargaining power of the farmers. All right, fine. Thank you, Kathleen. Along the same thoughts here, we're talking about the cost of food. And of course, the American housewife is the biggest purchaser of all because she does the shopping for the entire family. We'd like to bring to your attention here that there is a marking and transportation situation uh, printed by uh, quarterly by the Economic Research Service from which we've gathered our data here, which we'll be showing to you in a moment. And we're talking about the cost of food and just what constitute the figures that go into the cost of food. Now, first we'll start off with the farm food basket, which you see there, and this is what the average uh, wage earner and clerical worker families 
purchased in one year per household. As you see, the first quarter we have there of January through March, that at the yearly rate, this will be something like $1,090 at the per household that will be spent on the food basket. Now, the farm value in this food basket is actually $451, and the spread between what the farmer receives and uh, what the consumer has to pay in this typical average food basket is $639. Going a little further, I saw through this article that the farmer's share of the retail cost on cigarettes and what the retail cost was. In 1965, we see that the average retail cost of a pack of cigarettes was 29 9 10 cents, almost, say, 30 cents a pack. And yet the farm value in that pack of cigarettes was just a little uh, over 3.8 cents. Now this gives you a little idea of what variations there are in food costs. And certainly this is the even more pronounced in a lot of the everyday items that the housewife purchases in the food basket, I should say, completes even more. For example, the next, next chart that we're going to show you here where we pick up just a few of the items that you do include in your everyday shopping. You see in the chart that we do have beef and a pound of beef retail cost on the average is 84 and 6 tenths uh, cent per pound and yet the farmer receives 51.5 for this same amount of beef. A pound of pork, as you see in this chart, retail cost is 78.1 and the net farm value of this pound of pork when you purchase it is only 46.2 cents. Now going on, milk, a half gallon will retail cost 48 cents and the farmer receives 22.8 for the same amount of milk. A pound a loaf of bread, you see an X there, that the retail cost of it is 21.5 and the net farm value in this loaf of bread is 3.5. There's quite a spread there. Corn flakes, for example, 12 ounces of these. Retail cost 29 cents and the net farm value is two and a half cents. Uh, going on potatoes, 10 pounds, uh, you pay 68.1 for them and the farmer receives 21.6. Tomatoes a pound will cost you 35 and 8 tenths cent where the farmer receives 12.8. Margarine a pound will cost you to, on the average 28 and 110 cents and the net farm value in this is 8.7. This are just some typical items that are included in the farm food uh, market basket. By no means can we time in this program to include them all. But I did want to bring out the a few to give you an idea that the American farmer isn't receiving a terrific price for his commodities. We are happy to report that we are increasing our income, but we're also working very hard at the moment to keep the good prices that we have. Now, is there anything that you would like to add at this point, uh, Mrs. Burster? Is there, since these are women's viewpoint, I, I don't want to take up a lot of time in the program, but I'd like to have you uh, make a few comments, if you will, please. Well, um a noted uh, American once said that there is only three ways that a nation can uh, increase their wealth. That is by war and taking over another nation by force or by trade and by um, through agriculture they could plant a seed and create new wealth as if by a miracle. And I think that that the farmers and the, their wives should work together and work just as hard on marketing this production that we have as we do in producing it. There isn't a wife that won't help their husband any day in the field when they're busy, and I think that they should work just as hard marketing it and getting an adequate income and creating the new wealth that the nation deserves. Uh, thank you, Well, These are certainly interesting remarks and we'll move on. Uh, Kathleen, do you have anything that you'd like to add on uh, to this or in this vein? Well, uh, farm population may be down drastically from what it used to be, but the uh, farm still carries uh, much of the weight in the overall job picture. City folks, among many others, are badly in need of a refresher course. 
I think they think the farmers is just taking in all kinds of money and um, they don't realize how much our expense have gone up. And I think it would be interesting if they would just um, sit down and analyze uh, the capital investment in one medium-sized farming operation. And then uh, it would be very comparable to the one uh, of a small industry in town. And uh, it might be challenging to know that uh, the help situation is quite badly on the farm. And the truth is a sizable slice of the nation's economy strength still lies in the farm field. Uh, I am assuming here, Kathleen, that the reason that we do have a problem of getting help on the farm is uh, uh, it seems that we're competing for the, uh, should I say, wage earners, uh, and they are all, I would say this, this is determined by the city and the industrial worker and when you apply for a worker to work on the farm, uh, he's looking something in these price ranges. And uh, to tell the truth, at this point, it's just a little difficult to meet the competition that uh, they can have shorter hours uh, working in town and will receive a higher income. I assume that this is what you were that's talking about on the... That's right. The manager, the owner, puts many, many more hours in than the hired labor does. This is true. Uh, I, I have no uh, doubt that you uh, participated in the We know all farming. about this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have anything at this point that you'd like to add, Fern, that we've been talking about that we haven't let you? Uh... Well, uh, we all know that the family farm is the perfect spot to raise children. They can have pets without too much worry about infringing on other pe people's rights. They have, uh, we can have fresh air and and uh, it's a perfect spot for children and grandchildren. It, the, uh, as long as we can keep this type of a, of a home for families, uh, this is what we're working for. Uh, this, of course, is the what we call a way of life in agriculture that we've been used to. Uh, just something that you've grown up with. Uh, I think uh, it goes back to the old saying that you can get the boy out of the country, but you just can't get the country out of the boy. And there is by nature, uh, being human beings, that we do take pride in producing and everybody, even if they do move to town, they have the basic things that they like to plant a garden and watch things grow. So th this is a very strong point in uh, obtaining a better income for our farmers. Uh, we realize that we're losing, there's fewer and fewer farmers. Uh, in fact, uh, just recently I attended a uh, uh, meeting in Iowa City and they were telling us about the trends in agriculture. Uh, they made it sound as if it was impossible to do anything about these trends and I'm happy to report that uh, the National Farmers Organization feels that well, there is something we can do about this. We don't say that we can completely uh, turn agriculture around, the exodus that we're speaking of, losing farms. For example, uh, at this meeting they told us that in our own county of Johnson County that during the years of 45 through 50 that three and uh, two tenths percent of the farmers in, in, that, uh, in our county uh, were displaced and we had a reduction uh, in the years 50 to 55 of seven and one tenths percent. And through the years of 55 and 60, we had a reduction of seven and seven tenths percent and from the years 60 through 65, there was a 12.07 reduction in the number of farmers in Johnson County. As you see, uh, the trend is growing larger. Uh, we don't say that lack of income is the entire problem. There are other, but it's, it's a very high percentage that causes the American farmer to leave the farm and go to the city. When this also will uh, create new social problems, uh, we do know that any social changes, political changes of this kind create problems and what we're trying to do is keep as many farmers as we can out on the farm. We feel that the farmer, if he is given a return of in, on his investment that is comparable to other segments of society that certainly will at least slow down the trend. Uh, the projection even further going uh, to the U.S. as a total uh, 1965, we've got something like three and two tenths million farmers. They're projecting in 1980 that we'll be down to one and a half million farmers, and that only 750,000 of these will be commercial farms. 
At the present time, out of these three and a half million farmers, they consider that one million of these farmers produce 80% of the total output of the food that we raise here in the United States, and that the other two and a half million only raise 20% of the output. So though we do have changes, we need changes in marketing, as has been talked about here today. And I promise the ladies that I can give them all the time they, they wish to tell about their viewpoints of agriculture. Uh, is there anyone here that would like to add some more to our program? Well, Ivan, um, all right, Kathleen. <laughs> um, you know, the farmers spend several weeks riding a tractor to produce a crop. And uh, we must all spend some time and effort to get a price for our crops. This takes assistance and determination on a homemaker's part as well as it does the head of the family, which he spends many hours. And as a homemaker, I realize that if we keep our determination, we cannot lose. To me, it is not the, not the important one who wins the first battle, but the one who wins the last. And I think that if all the homemakers in the rural areas of America would stick together and get behind this thing, there is no reason why we can't bargain for our products. We raise them, they're ours, and we should have a price for it. Well, those certainly are inspiring words, uh, Kathleen. Uh, I see that why uh, you're one of the outstanding leaders in your era. This is, I certainly have to agree with you. Uh, is there something you'd like to add at this point, Well. Well, I work NFO. I try to do everything that I can to, to raise the, our income. And as I said, this has been an educational program for me. And looking back at history, in every country of the world where the, the country has lost their family-type agriculture, they have also lost their form of government. So I think that the housewife, it, should be reading, finding out what is happening, and get behind their husband and try to get a better income. All right, thank you. Is there anything that you'd like to add quickly here, Fern? Uh, um, I would. All right, I would. Hi, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very proud of being um, farm wife. It's very rewarding to see a crop of hay out there and means a lot of sweat and toil and hours. But, um, and um, seeing a newborn calf and going through the pastures, I mean, maybe this isn't very exciting minutes, but um, to me it's very rewarding. We should be proud of ourselves. I think this is uh, very true. I know it's very hard to convey uh, in words here what we're, all we'd like to say, and as we're limited for time, uh, certainly I'd like to say at this point it's been indeed a pleasure to uh, be visiting with you uh, ladies uh, this afternoon, or this I should say today, I uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity of having uh, this chance to chat with you, and certainly we want all of you ladies to learn to know your NFO lady members. They certainly do a lot to help us in organizational work and as well help yourselves. Farmers for a healthy and stable farm economy join the NFO. The National Farmers Organization is an organization dedicated to raising and stabilizing farm prices through collective bargaining. Tune in again next week at the same time for another edition of U.S. Farm Report, a weekly program that delves into the many vital issues affecting American agriculture today. U.S. Farm Report, a rural area public relations program, is brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this television viewing area. For more information on the National Farmers Organization, contact the county organization in your county or write NFO, Corning, Iowa. Farmers, remember, collective bargaining is the key to farmer success. Join the NFO today.